Thank you to Soccer Co. and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be revisiting line work or line art in Procreate once again. As you guys know, I'm not the most fond of doing line art in general, but I kind of avoid doing it especially on Procreate just because I find I'm not too used to it nor have I really found a brush that I really like to do line work with so um, as you can see I had a sketch of Don Hung on my Procreate and I decided to just do a bunch of testing and changing of settings of different brushes to find something that I liked and in the end I thought I was going to use the 6B pencil as my line art brush of choice um, and kind of in comparison for today Here's the one I did about a year ago. I think it's been more than a year actually, like almost a year and a half. And this is the one I did of Yoi Mia. And I believe I probably have the pen listed in the description of this video. So if you're interested in this specific brush, you can check that video out because I don't remember it on the top of my head. But I wanted to show you guys kind of the comparison of this one compared to how I work with the one that we're gonna be doing today. Actually, I had a thought occur in my brain before I started to draw today's drawing and I was looking at my sketches. I was always told that I sketch pretty cleanly and that's because I tend to erase and clean up as I work on my sketch because I know I want it to be clean to prepare myself for the coloring or painting portion of the drawing. So let's talk about subject matter and then we can talk a little bit about line work once we get there. So for the sketching portion, I am going to be doing a little bit in real time, but the majority of it will be in time lapse because this is not supposed to be the focus of the video. So today I am going to be sketching and drawing Millie Parfait, which is a VTuber from Niji Sanji EN, and they are part of the third wave of Etheria. So, um, yeah, I decided that I wanted to draw Millie because I really personally enjoy what well, first her streams, but also her designs very cute. I like the color combination of kind of like the black, orange, and teal-ish green color that she has for her color palette. But another thing is that I wanted to do a lot of detailing, or at least a little bit more than usual for the hair. So I know there's a lot of pros and cons of doing line work. Um, and for me, I associate line work with a lot of the cons because I find it as a time sink. I don't really like how I do line art particularly for myself because I think I oversimplify certain things or I'm not giving myself enough to work with when I start to color or my mindset kind of shifts a little bit when I start to color because I almost go into a cell shady mode rather than being painterly. So we'll see how this one ends up. Um, but for the sketch, I am basically using the sketch round brush from Jing Sketches' brush pack, which if you're interested, you can check the links in the description and you can probably find it um, on their Gumroad or whatever I have linked down below. And this brush is my favorite for sketching. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is that I'm going to abandon all of my choices that I've made in the beginning where I was doing a bunch of the testing of the brushes and we're not going to use any of them. I'm actually going to be using the sketch brush as the line arting brush as well because if I like the look of it for the sketch, why wouldn't I like the look of it for the line work? So I thought maybe I could use it for both. So once we get to the line arting portion, I'll talk a little bit of whether or not I kind of adjust the brush or not and kind of my choice on re like kind of why. For me, this brush is like it's soft enough but also it's easy to work with like I don't have to go over a certain part a lot of times and usually when I do line weight variation I actually go back and manually do it myself rather than doing a kind of like one stroke method where you press hard if you want something to be thicker and darker and then you go super light to get that thinner line so I'm not going to be doing that I like to usually manually um, put the line weight variation just like as I'm working. Also, the habit I have is like I usually like to clean up my sketch as I work, but I know that's not exactly um, necessary for this. So I actually kept my sketch pretty rough. I'm gonna show a side by side comparison of when I drew Sino as an kind of like an idol version, and you can see kind of how I 
have my sketch prepped for when I know I'm going to be coloring and painting versus if I'm going to do line work. Because if I'm going to do line work, I don't need my sketch to be uber clean. It can be a little bit messy. So here's the side by side comparison with Sino. So you can kind of see the difference for the most part. But before we get into the line art for Millie, I wanted to let you guys know more about Tokyo Treat and Soccer Co. Tokyo Treat and Soccer Co. are snack boxes that allow you to experience Japan from the comfort of your own home, all packaged in these cute, well-packaged boxes. I always adore their packaging, and this box in particular is super packed. Tokyo Treat is the heaviest Japanese snack box with 15 to 20 full-size Japanese snacks, including a Japanese exclusive drink, an instant ramen, exclusive seasonal Kit Kats, and much more. I will show you guys all the snacks that were included in this box, and from all of these, you can see that there are so many snacks to try out. While Sakura Ko is an authentic Japanese snack box with new seasonal Japanese treats every month, so for the month of May, Soccer Co. partnered up with Ishizuka Glass and they made this beautiful Soccer Co. tea glass. I always feel like the Soccer Co. snacks are almost always kind of aligned with my taste palette, which makes me look forward to their boxes even more. Both boxes come with a 24-page culture guide and the booklet includes information on each of the snacks in the box, including information on potential allergies and if the snack is vegetarian friendly. Each month is a different theme, meaning that you get to try out a whole new selection of new treats and snacks every month. For example, Tokyo Treats box theme was Sakura Starlight Snack Fest, while Sakura Co's theme was the Moonlit Sakura. So to kind of accompany with some of the snacks from the Sakura Co box, I actually like to make the tea first. I think that they usually pair pretty well and they kind of help me cut the sweetness a little bit. The tea for Sakura Co is this peach hibiscus tea. I think this is one of my favorites from the teas that I've tested from their boxes. The aroma was very sweet, it's very peachy due to the white peach flavor, but it's also a green tea which I think works very well. Also this beautiful pink hue that it gives off when you pour the water, it just looks really pretty. I kind of drank a bit while working on the, the chibi drawing that you guys saw from a, maybe like a week or so ago and I had some of the snacks which in particular I was kind of finishing off the Genji pie which I opened earlier. These are very light and crispy and a little sweet from the glossy sugar that is on top. I actually had something very similar to this when I was in Japan a couple of years ago called unagi pie so this one was very much reminiscent of that. For Tokyo Treat, the Kit Kat is a must try for me. So. Uh, uh, this time is the banana and caramel Kit Kat, which kind of is like a unique flavor that I've never really tried for a Kit Kat, but I really enjoyed it. Um, it's quite sweet as well. I didn't really show myself eating it on camera. Let me see if I could find some footage, but the sweet and salty spring chips were one of my favorites. Now, luckily the bag wasn't fully finished because my parents and my brother got into the bag too. Um, but yeah, so if you would like to get a box for yourself or want to give this as a lovely gift to friends or family, which I might be doing pretty soon, uh, then do check out the links down in the description to get your snacks today and thank you again to Sakura Co and Tokyo Treat for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the line art for Millie. So um, to kind of prep everything, I decided to lower down the opacity quite a bit for the sketch and I made a new layer so that we can actually start to do the line work. So I decided that I was gonna just kind of play around with just the size of the brush. I'm not gonna be changing any other settings because I don't really wanna ruin this brush because I truly do enjoy using it for sketching. So I'm just gonna be playing around with the size. I think for the most part, I'm gonna stick to one size for the brush, um, which as you can see, it's about 8%. But I did use it to be a bit thicker when I was doing the outline for Millie's eyes because I like to have usually the upper eyelid to be quite thick or the upper eye line, I guess, to be quite thick. And then everything else is going to be, if I want it to be thicker, I will just manually go over that part more and more and then we can just do that. So for the eyes, because Millie is more or less straight on looking at us and the face isn't like turned in any kind of which way, I decided to just duplicate the eyes. I will be painting them separately so they don't really give that uncanny valley feeling. And then I kept the eyes on a separate layer to the rest. So for the line work, I'm basically going to keep the eyes and the eyebrows on a separate layer and then everything else. So let's say her face, her facial features, her clothing, and the hair are all going to be on one layer. And the reason why I'm doing that is that I just don't want to manage too many layers. 
usually when I do line work in Paint Tool Sci or Clip Studio Paint. I guess like mostly in Paint Tool Sci because I do majority of my line working art um, in Paint Tool Sci. I would use as many layers as I need, but I usually separate it into kind of like five categories or layers. So I usually have eyes on a separate layer, eyebrows on a separate layer, hair on a separate layer, and then clothing on a separate layer, and then anything that has like exposed skin. So that'll be like the face, any hands, legs, um, I don't know, neck, anything like that is on a separate layer as well. So in total, I usually have about five, but today we're only going to be doing three. And it's just, for me, it's just easier to manage. But you can see that when I'm doing the line work, I'm not treating it the same way as I would like a sketch. So usually when I sketch, I tend to do a little bit of back and forth when I'm using the pencil on the surface. But when I'm doing line work, I don't really like doing like short choppier lines just because I don't have the confidence of making sure this thing's gonna look super clean. So I kind of do a combination of just shorter, more fluid lines into one another to get something that looks a little bit more clean and a little bit less chicken scratchy in my opinion. I know for me, sometimes when I do line work, especially traditionally, I tend to not do things all in one stroke just because I am scared of screwing something up like absolutely terribly. But because I do have the access to control Z or the undo button, I can just do like one fell swoop. And then if I don't like it, I can just redo it again. But it's definitely a good habit if you want to get more clean line work or you want to get more confidence in your, uh, I guess like your strokes. It's definitely good to use like your whole arm rather than your wrist and just get one fluid motion all the way across. So um, some habits that I definitely had while I was kind of doing the line work is that I tend to thicken up certain things as I go. So it's just kind of mentally um, myself checking out a little bit when I do the line work. So any corners, I like to darken up a little bit. So like whenever two lines kind of make contact, um, so like a lot of the times it's in between pieces of hair. I also make the corners of mouths a little bit more darker and thicker. So I kind of treat them like little balls at the end. I don't know why I did that, but it's something I've always done, even just like doing mouths in general. But for me, I do like adding line weight where I can. And you can see that my line art isn't super thin. I'm always told that I tend to have thick line work and that might be the reason why I also don't really like my line work sometimes because it looks too jarring in my opinion even though usually after I finish the line work and I finish the coloring I will go back to the line work and I will soften the colors by alpha locking the lines and we can kind of match the line work color to be closer to the actual objects color and that tends to give a softer look but I don't want the lines to interfere too too much so hopefully these aren't too thick of lines but I'm totally not a person who enjoys doing thin lines because I feel like maybe it won't really fit with how I like to work because my stuff isn't super detailed but I feel like it's a bit hard to know exactly what you like and don't like if you don't try it so maybe in the future I'll try my best to do some thinner line work here and there um, another thing is that I have a hard time being able to think about whether or not I want something to be defined by a line rather than me painting it in. And when I don't do line work and I'm purely merging my sketch into my colors, I kind of give myself the option to. And it's basically just me trying to sharpen things, make things look as they should be. But with line work because it's kind of like predefining the shapes before you even start coloring sometimes i get into that weird area of like did i need these lines for the sketch or not the sketch i guess the line work or will i paint it in later and will i like it later because for me i kind of have to keep in mind a bit of the form so let's say like where millie has her I guess like the cuff of her sleeve. Sometimes if I don't um, take in consideration like the thickness, sometimes I will forget to paint it in if I don't do the line work and vice versa. So like if I put in the line, sometimes I don't remember to shade it and it just looks flat. So it's just like small things I nitpick about. 
But basically, um, that's the line work process for me. And the reason why I keep the eyes and the eyebrows on separate layers. Also, this is the line work, what it looks like at the very end. I forgot to take a picture or not picture, a screenshot of what the line work looks at this portion. So apologies about that. Um, but back to the eyes and the eyebrows. So the reason why I keep them on separate layers is actually because I like to make any portion where the hair kind of intersects or covers up to be a little bit more transparent. Now before we, or before I remember to make those parts a little bit more see-through, I actually went ahead and duplicated my line work after I put them into a group and then I flattened the new one so that I could purely make that one the reference layer and Procreate will be able to drop colors and select from the reference layer much more easier even if the layer is hidden, which I have done. So it just makes it a lot easier for me to utilize the reference tool because it's only available for one layer and it's not available to put for a group, which is kind of what I'm used to in both Clip Studio Paint and in Paint Tool Sci. So for the eyes and the eyebrows i did use the selection tool to kind of just block out where the hair was and then lightly go with an eraser to make it a little bit transparent because usually for like stylized styles especially like anime styles or cartoon styles sometimes the eyebrows tend to float above the hair which doesn't make sense um, but it's just easier to kind of help with expressions or anything like that so a lot of people leave it above the hair but for me i like to kind of just do it kind of like both ways so it's like still very visible but i want to make sure that it still looks like it's under the hair in a way so after the line work is done and you can see it's much more cleaner compared to much more cleaner much more clean is that i don't even know if that sounds correct but it just looks a lot more clean and a lot more wow i just lost my train of thought uh i don't know like what am i saying basically you can see that my line work and my sketch are just vastly different just by application and just like different process but i'm using the same brush and like i said i think it's a good choice that i made that i wanted to use the sketch brush over the other brushes that i tried to make fit my criteria for a line work brush in paint tool sci i actually use the airbrush tool but i have it on i think like the third hardness and it's like almost fully opaque too but I only like using the airbrush because it's quite soft and I do like the softer line work even though like once it's applied onto the canvas it probably looks like a brush tool so there's not really a reason for me to use the airbrush but for here um I should have talked about this prior to the brush does have like a very slight texture to it and it's not like fully opaque sometimes depending on my pressure and I don't really like using the drop tool the color drop tool as much when i'm doing line work because you'll see when i'm painting in the eyes and then the clothing and the hair there's going to be a weird gap between the line work and then where i'm placing the colors and even though i can change the tolerance for the color drop picker thing it it still won't cover the whole thing so i still like to manually color things in and i think that also helps with the fact that i tend to manually color when i'm doing like my more painterly approach where i'm basically coloring in just my sketch and things are still quite rough um but yeah i think for the most part when i'm painting in and blocking in different oh here's actually the thing so you can see like there's like a pixelated outline around certain areas and it's only there when i tend to use the selection tool or when i'm drag and drop colors to certain areas but that is kind of like the purpose for me to use the reference tool too maybe i should explain that a little bit so in paint tool sci and in Clip Studio Paint. There's probably in other programs too, but those two are the, like where I'm most familiar with this method, is that there's a way for you to make a, your folder or a specific layer for the program to basically reference, which means that pretend you, if you have like a closed circle and you wanna drag a color into the circle, but you wanna be on a different layer, you can reference the circle as the line work and put it as like the selection or reference tool and then go back to the layer that's like completely blank and you can just fill in that color and it'll just fill in that shape which i find very helpful because i don't like accidentally uh, like dragging and dropping colors into 
the line art layer by accident, nor do I want to go into my line art layer, select the area, then go back to the layer to color. I just find it a lot slower. So I find it a lot easier to set my line art to the reference layer so that even if I do want to drag and drop like right here, um, you can see that I'm doing because I do have the hair on a separate layer, but you can see I'm easily just clicking and filling in the areas based on where my, I guess like hair layer is. And you can see that the referenced one is kind of turned off, which I do like the fact that um, Procreate has that option, but I do wish in the future that Procreate can make the kind of like group to be the reference layer. It might be a lot easier for people because you don't have to merge all your layers together to make sure that you want to reference the whole entirety of your line work. It might be just like a me problem though, so. But you can see that there's a lot of gaps by doing the dragging and dropping, so probably not as useful as I needed it to be. So I'm just basically gonna manually fill in rest of the gaps here and there. But I did use the drag and drop color portion to kind of fill in the majority of the hair because that would be a little bit more tedious. And I think after this, I pretty much stopped using the drag and drop because I do, I, I found it a little bit annoying to have to deal with the little kind of like white outline between the lines and where the color is. So uh, the reason why Millie's hair was blue in the first place is that I decided to layer clip and fill in blue on top of Millie's hair, which was actually kind of more like a blondish yellow color. And it's just easier for me to see the blue color rather than the yellow because her skin tone is also very light. So I might miss some of the white gaps here and there. And you can just easily do this by just making the color like blue like the layer itself blue and then just manually color and then alpha lock it and change it again. But I decided that I just clip a blue layer on top so I can just see which color that I'm placing everywhere. I'm not sure if any of this is going to make sense because I don't have proper examples. So I do apologize. It just, just comes off as just really rambly. Um, but coloring wise, I didn't really talk about it too much. So for Millie's skin, I basically colored the same way as I would when I'm painting in general. And the eyes I did paint a little bit more cleaner and I feel like it's just a lot more vibrant and a lot cleaner compared to how I usually paint it. Because usually when I paint, I usually have a bunch of sketch lines in there or like maybe the pupil's not exactly aligned because things need to be shifted a little bit. So I do like how the eyes look more or less when I do line work. But for the hair, I did find it a little bit difficult and this might be not the best example because I didn't do a band of highlights anywhere just because I thought it wasn't really necessary um, in terms of like the lighting scheme and because her hat will cast a shadow um, usually around like the crown of her head. So I decided to not do a highlight. But for the shadows, I decided to just block everything in for the most part. And I know in the beginning I actually was trying to be quite clean with my application, but I did switch between doing like the painting brush that I usually use and then the sharp render. So that once I do have majority of the colors kind of placed, I can go back in with the sharp render and kind of do individual details for different strands of hair or different chunks like I usually do when I'm doing just normal painting in Procreate. And then for the clothing, the clothing I did separate into two different layers, so I kept her hat on a separate layer and then the rest of her clothes onto another layer. It's just easier for me to manage because I don't want to color in a large shape and accidentally color into one another. But for her clothing on her actual body and not the hat, I decided to fill everything in white first, um, just because I don't want to miss any gaps first of all, so I'm not using the drag and drop for the whole thing. I'm just doing it for certain areas, but basically I did an outline all the way around her and then I would fill in the inside with a larger brush so I don't miss any areas. And I'll individually color portions of her clothing and shade as we go. So it's very similar method still as how I usually work and color in my normal method, I guess. So yeah, I think Coloring wise, not too much has changed other than I have a little bit of control of where certain things are going and certain things won't overlap. But for the most part, I think moving forward, I might just consider cleaning up my sketch a little bit more or I don't know. I'm still kind of 50-50 on line work or line art. 
I I do see the appeal of having kind of something a little bit more permanent. It's also easy for you probably to get details that won't budge later. And I don't know. I I feel like I'm still biased towards not wanting to do line work also because I'm lazy. So in terms of time, coloring probably pretty similar and like rendering and stuff minus I don't have to clean up line work and stuff, but the sketch I think took about half an hour and then the line work took about 40 minutes so if I actually spend time just cleaning up my sketch initially instead of doing line work on top I would have saved a bit of time technically but then it would have definitely put more time into me cleaning things up at the end so it's kind of a one thing's a little bit more of a drawback than the other but for the most part it's kind of like a give and take so I don't I don't know if I'm gonna incorporate line work too too much in my actual painting process or anything like that maybe if I really need to but I think this was just fun to do and I think it's just a little bit nice to know for myself that I can just use the same sketching brush for the line work as long as I force myself to just slow down and make things look clean um, also I should have mentioned this earlier too I did not use a stabilizer so that's one thing i don't really like in procreate is that i still think paint tool Sai has the most superior stabilizer or like the smoothing tool or whatever you call for me it makes the most sense everything else i think clip studio paints isn't too bad but the percentage or like the bar for it it's a little weird so sometimes i sketch with like the 15 on Clip Studio Paint, but then sometimes if I really need heavy control, it's like in the 50s. But then everywhere in between, I feel like it's not too much of a difference, which feels a little bit weird. But in Procreate, I don't like the smoothing or the stabilization tool at all. So that's why I didn't really use it here. Whatever the sketch like the Jing sketch brush, I think has their stabilization set. I'm pretty sure it's not exactly at zero. It might be like anywhere between like, I don't know, one and three or something like that. It's like quite low. I, I don't know. The stabilization or the smoothing or whatever it's called in Procreate, I feel like it overcorrects your lines a little bit too much. It doesn't feel very natural to me, which is why I feel like I just need to I guess it's a skill issue. <laughs> I just need to get better at doing line work manually anyways, like similar to how people would do it traditionally. So I need to rely more on my arm and kind of with the confidence of, you know, kind of doing one stroke and stuff, which I don't think I did too bad with today's line work. There are some areas that were a little bit shaky, but for the most part, I don't think it turned out too bad. I actually didn't mind the line work too much for the one I did of Millie and I don't think I had too many areas where I feel like I needed to adjust afterwards so another reason why I do like painting over line work sometimes is that line work sometimes feels like a coloring book to me and it kind of feels a little bit restricting but also the fact that correcting things becomes a little bit difficult um even though like technically if you have like the idea of painting you could definitely paint over certain areas and do the line work again but i know some people including myself would have to go back into the line work change it go back to the base color change it then do the shading again and it's just like a whole process but also like if you don't make the mistake in your sketch and your line work then you probably don't have to overcorrect like that so maybe it's just a skill issue i'm not too sure uh, to basically finish up millie though i basically did the same thing I usually do, except for this one, I selected everything, popped it into a group, I copied the group, merged the new one, and then put Gaussian Blur to kind of fade out, or not fade out, make her hand and everything kind of surrounding her not in focus. I decided to make her face and a little bit of her shoulder area in focus for the most part. Just adding some effects here and there and then some overlay to adjust the colors a little bit. And I think that's pretty much it for the drawing and illustration of Millie. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me kind of just ramble my way through justifying myself to do line work in the future but yeah here here's millie i think she looks really cute um and i like the end result quite a bit so i think 
yeah in the future we'll see if i end up doing a little bit even more cleaner sketch or maybe doing multiple sketches to get a cleaner look i don't know i'm not too sure i probably won't do line work but i can i can see the reason why people would enjoy doing it and why it's a little bit easier at times but I think that's about it for today's drawing session. I hope you guys enjoyed today's drawing session though and watching me draw and do the line work for Millie. And I think that's it. I'll talk to you guys next time in the next video. Bye! actually forgot i was trying to explain here that i didn't use these two different uh script liner and the sketch line thing that i was using for the actual line work for today so yeah ignore that okay bye